What are you doing? Well, I am trying to get my bearings on here. Oh, Ooh, yeah, pun, 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 pun. Uh, I am working on this pedestal for a sculpture that I made. And it's going to have a couple of bearings in the bottom of it so the sculpture can spin. And I get to ask this question every now and again. You know, why, how do I do it? Why do I do it? You know, what, what, what kind of bearings do I use? So I thought, well, this will give you a chance to peek inside before I put the cover back on again. And what we've got going on here is, A, I lost the hole. There it is. <laughs> And B, I've got a couple of, get on there. I've got a couple of little flange bearings, I guess they're called. It's just this little, little flange with a bearing inside with a collar got a little grease zerk on it right here so you can put a little grease in it every now and again and it's got a couple of set screws in that flange or in that collar inside you can see one right there and the other right there so once you put your shaft down inside you just tighten up those two set screws and that'll hold everything right in place but for all you guys and gals out there paying attention you're probably wondering well why does he have two bearings on there what does he need two bearings for so what you find, I'll just put this shaft down into this upper bearing and let me tighten up that set screw and I'll tighten up that set screw. So now that's held in that bearing nice and tight, but what you find is there's enough slop. There's enough slop in that bearing from one side to the other. You can see the bearing moving right there. So that's why I always wind up using two bearings, especially these little flange bearings, one on top of the other, because they will cancel one another out. So loosen that back up. And run it down into the into the lower bearing. Tighten up those. Tighten up the two on the bottom. And now, other than the fact that these two bolts are still loose. And I just need to tighten those up. If I had a wrench. <laughs> so what you'll find is, you know, once you get everything tight inside there, all of that side-to-side -side movement in one bearing gets canceled out with two bearings. And now your piece will stand straight up and it'll spin okay, rather than having a big wobble in it. So why do you have that little door? Well, I put this little cutout in here so I could A, weld this plate in to be able to mount the bearings to. Otherwise, I would have had to have reached up all the way from the bottom, put that plate in place, have no way to get it level, and then weld it without even being able to see it up inside that hole. Heck with it. Cut this out, get my plate in where it belongs, get it flat, get it level, weld it in. I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just add some tabs in here, four tabs. This area up here, I'll just weld it in, grind it smooth, you won't even know it was cut. This area down here, I'll just make a little inspection plate. You know, just have a little plate over it, have four screws in it, th you know, thread the little tabs so I can screw them in, and that way you'll have a little access port to get in to grease them, change them. You know, if you ever wanted to like change the color of the base, that way you could take the set, set screws loose, take the sculpture out, have it out of the way, send the steel base down, have it powder coated, painted, do whatever you want to, to want to to it, rather than have the bearings trapped up inside there with no way to get to them. So now I've got these bolts here tightened up. You can see other than a little bit of flex in the shaft itself. 
everything stays nice and straight. I got a little shot of grease in there on both of those bearings. It's been a little bit easier. Now, now for finishing it off, I'm going to come in here on this triangular shaped top and I'm going to cut three pieces that are going to go up at just a little bit of an angle. I have just a little bit of a, of a angle to it. Come up with a hole right there in the middle for the shaft to go through. Have to grind all this down, smooth all that out. So I have to get the tabs on it, get the door made, you know, get them threaded, get some, you know, find some countersunk screws so they'll look nice and smooth and flush on there. You know, and I will do some kind of trim work on the bottom. So it's rather than just a flat piece of plate sticking down to the floor, um, you know, I, I could, I could always put just a little piece of square on there. I could put a piece of round on there. You know, just something just to dress it up a little bit. And uh, off to the powder coater it goes. You know, I'll be polishing on the copper piece, getting it all shiny and pretty, getting a clear coat over it so it stays shiny while this is down getting powder coated. You know, probably like a semi-gloss black, you know, maybe a satin black, something like that. Just so it kind of disappears in the background. That's what you want people to look at, not so much the base. Will you take the bearings out when you send it down to be powdered? Well, right, right. That, that's, that's why the door is there. So, you know, when I'm getting ready to send it down, pull the bearings out, have them set aside, be working on the copper, getting the copper all shined up. This is going to get sandblasted inside out, painted, baked. You know, the door will get painted, or you know, blasted and painted and baked. Even the screws, they'll do the screws separately, but those will all get painted the same color, so everything matches. I think it'll look pretty nice. So I'm going to get back to work here. You guys are going to come out to Facebook and look me up out there. Kevin Carone, artist. See what's going on. And I'll see y'all next time.